Okie doke. Welcome to our webinar, Plastic versus Ocean Wildlife, um, where we'll be discussing the worst consumer plastics for ocean animals uh, and how we're going to beat them. Now, just bear with us a few minutes. Um, I'm just going to wait while folks find the link um, and locate themselves and get themselves online uh, before we really get sort of stuck in to the webinar. Uh, for those who have joined us, um, thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, one of many in a series of webinars that the Australian Marine Conservation Society is producing uh, to talk about how plastic um, and uh, hurts our ocean wildlife, to talk about sharks, to talk about our marine, precious marine parks in Australia uh, and many other issues. Cool. Now get that slide deck up. Uh, now, while we're waiting as well, I want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and sea country. Uh, on which we're presenting from. Uh, I'm presenting from Brisbane and the lands around the Brisbane River are the uh, heritage of the Yagara and Turrbal people. And I want to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging uh, and acknowledge that we are meeting on and presenting on stolen land. For those who don't know, uh, the Australian Marine Conservation Society has been around for 55 years. We just celebrated our 55th birthday yesterday. In fact, um, started out as a passionate group of uh, marine conservationists, ocean lovers, uh, scientists who wanted to protect our Great Barrier Reef uh, and some of the lands around there. Uh, you might be surprised to know that uh, 55 years ago, uh, there were plans to mine coral on the Great Barrier Reef um, and those passionate ocean lovers came together to defend um, our precious ocean asset. Unthinkable today, now that we all know and love the, the precious ecosystem that is our reef. Um, and that legacy continues on to this day. Uh, and it's great for myself as well to be a part of that amazing legacy. Uh, if you have connection issues, no worries. Uh, a, a recording will be available on our Facebook page after the live stream as well. That'll automatically get posted up there for you folks to see. Uh, and uh, if you have questions, please post them in the comments. I'll tack on them on the screen at the end if we have time. Uh, or later after we wrap up, I'll jump on into the, the chat on the comments and I'll uh, see if I can help with any questions that you've got. Alrighty, I might get started. Cool. Now, as Australians, we have the great privilege to live on the largest island on earth. Uh, and we grow up surrounded by the most beautiful and amazing marine wildlife. Uh, we treasure our beautiful beaches um, and amazing animals like our whales, our dolphins, our turtles, uh, all these beautiful creatures that we get to grow up surrounded by. We get to swim with them, snorkel with them, visit them, see this amazing ecosystem that we're surrounded by. Uh, and sharing oceans with things like ocean giants, these, these huge, beautiful whales is, is a great privilege. Um, and also it's a great responsibility of ours. Uh, looking after this ocean heritage uh, is our sacred responsibility as people who call this place home. Myself, uh, I grew up in a place called Mandurah in Western Australia, uh, which is on a, a inlet. And I got to grow up uh, sort of swimming with dolphins, seeing them follow and chase our boats around. Uh, the occasional curious whale that would come in and visit the inlet and the magic of seeing these, these beautiful creatures. Uh, and then I, I think later in life, was shocked, like many, to learn of the tide of plastic that's been flowing into our oceans and how it's hurting these creatures. Uh, I think many of us have been shocked to learn that our oceans are filling up with trash. It's estimated that one garbage truck worth of plastic flows into our world's oceans every minute. From plastic is being found everywhere from the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the deepest ocean canyon, uh, to the depths of Antarctica being found, microplastics being found in sea, life, uh, sea ice. To our Great Barrier Reef, uh, there's been some shocking news recently about the amount of plastic that's been recovered from the Great Barrier Reef. And we all think of it as this beautiful, pristine place, and in many, many respects it is, but it's shocking to find out that plastic's in there hurting the corals and wildlife uh, of this beautiful place. And contrary to popular belief, much of this plastic comes from here at home in Australia. CSIRO research shows most of the plastic hurting Australia's wildlife 
comes right here in Australia from the plastic products that are sold on our land. It's shocking to learn that millions of ocean animals die every year from plastic. It works out to about one animal killed every 30 seconds by plastic. It's a mammoth problem and we really need to start doing something about it. And unfortunately, plastic, you know, we all know and, and we've heard about this, this, the scourge of plastic pollution in our oceans. Um, but you might be shocked to learn that plastic production is actually increasing. Now, the fossil fuel companies, the oil and gas companies that actually produce plastic, uh, in many respects in their response to uh, ships away from oil and gas towards renewable industries, are actually shifting investment into increasing the production of plastic. And recent forecasts have shown that the oil and gas industry is increasing the production at a rate which will double the plastic in our oceans in just 10 years. So here today, I want to talk about 10 worst plastic products that are killing ocean wildlife. Now, there's two prime suspects that I'm not going to talk about today, um, and those are ghost gear. So this is um, fishing nets, fishing lines, stuff like that, which floats around in our oceans, entangling and killing wildlife. Um, and I'm not going to be talking about cigarette butts, which is actually one of the most common plastics found on our beaches. Uh, what I want to talk about today is those consumer products, the single use plastics that we use every day uh, that hurt our ocean wildlife as well. So we do have the power to do something about this problem. And the first step is understanding what are the plastics that we can give up or change in our day to day lives? And what are the plastics that we can take out of our economy now to actually start saving animal lives? So ask yourself, do you think you know what plastic products are the top killers of ocean animals? Let's see if you do. So the first one I want to talk about is plastic shopping bag. We've heard a lot about plastic shopping bags in recent years um, with moves to ban the bag in a, almost every state and territory in Australia. The last one, New South Wales, is just getting there now. Uh, and the reason why this one has been the first plastic that people have gone after is it's the worst. Recently, a plastic bag was one of those plastic items found in the Mariana Trench at a depth of 10.9 kilometres. No area escapes plastic like these. They escape and they float easily in the air and the water, travelling long distances. Um, and they're one of the most lethal killers. Birds get entangled in plastic bags and they drown. Um, turtles as well, their fins, their, their wings, birds and turtles, they can get caught through the, the holes in the, the plastic bag, et cetera, or they get sort of caught up inside it. Um, now our turtles, great swimmers, they can stay under the water for hours and hours at a time, um, but they do eventually need to come up and breathe. If they, they're entangled and they can't swim, they can't get to the surface, uh, then unfortunately they do suffocate and, and die. Um, turtles as well mistake plastic bags for jellyfish. Uh, one of their favourite foods. Uh, these, these plastic bags floating around in the water look exactly like jellyfish. And when they eat them, they sort of stay in their stomach. They don't get digested. And they can wrap around other plastics as well um, and create blockages, which are really sort of life-threatening. Um, some of the recent statistics have shown that a turtle eating just one piece of plastic has up to a 22% chance of dying. Now the next one, and you might be starting to hear um, sort of rumours about movement on this one, is plastic cutlery. Now we, whenever we're going out to cafes, etc., and we're getting our takeaway lunches and that kind of thing, uh, we're often given whether we ask for it or not some plastic cutlery. Now what happens to that plastic cutlery after we get it? Some of us might throw it in recycling, some of us might throw it in, in your general bin, but more often than not, that doesn't actually end up getting recycled. Uh, instead, it blows it in a, uh, blows off of uh, landfill, ends up in our waterways and out there in the ocean. And they're actually surprisingly frequently found on beaches. Now, these, these uh, plastic cutlery items take a long time to break down. They're sharp, they're lightweight, they're highly likely to be contaminated, and they can cause serious injuries. Uh, seabirds and turtles who eat plastics, um, pieces of cutlery, uh, knives and forks, etc., they can get internal injuries um, and poisoning from that. Uh, and they can also um, live in their gut for a really, really long time, causing blockages. Uh, funnily enough, uh, actually, one of the animals most likely to end up eating a piece of plastic cutlery is the albatross. Now, the albatrosses 
are more prone to eating plastic because they fish by skimming their beaks across the surface of the water, scooping up fish. Uh, but with the plastic garbage patches that are out there floating in the ocean, what they're also scooping up, of course, is these sorts of plastic items. Next on our list, plastic straws and drink stirrups. Now we've seen some big campaigns on this one, straw suck uh, and, and things like that. And there's a really good reason for that. Plastic straws and drink stirrers are really likely to end up in our oceans and are really likely to do harm. Many of us have seen the, the shocking footage of a turtle with a plastic straw in its nose that's being pulled out uh, and the harm that that, that that causes. And that was a shocking piece of footage that went around the world, millions and millions of views that really sort of galvanized people to start thinking about doing something about the, the scourge of plastic straws. Lightweight, these plastic straws are easily blown away from bins or landfill into waterways. And they can cause serious injuries when things like that happen, when they get stuck in noses or waterways. Or they can break down into smaller pieces and they get eaten by our ocean wildlife, causing internal injury. It's estimated that 10 million straws are being used in Australia every day. Not every year, every day. And it's well past time that we did something about it. In many cases, we don't need plastic straws or there are all alternatives available. Uh, and of course, uh, there are people who do need plastic straws, people who are living with disability, who need that flexibility and hardiness of a plastic straw. And we can have that. I think we, tr we all truly believe that we can have a, a, a society in which the people who truly need something can use it, but the vast majority who don't need it, who have alternatives that they can use, can switch. So it's time that we started doing something about plastic straws. Now, this is another one that people love to hate and there's a good reason for it. Plastic fruit and veggie bags. Now, these, you know, you, you will find in supermarkets, soft plastics like these wrapping up fruit and veg, sometimes whether we want it or not, um, or it's the only option available to you when you want to sort of gather your fruit and veggies together. Uh, and wasteful soft plastics like this are just as dangerous as plastic bags, as shopping bags, um, for the same reason. They float easily, they fly away in the air and they end up in the ocean in the waterways. Um, they're rarely recycled, you know. Uh, soft plastics like these, the best method for recycling them in Australia is often taking them to certain supermarkets who have red cycle bins. One, that's an extra effort. Two, it's something that's not available to everyone. And more often than not, these plastics just never get recycled. So where do they end up? In the environment, in our oceans, hurting our wildlife. Uh, they can cause a lot of harm to animals that eat them, um, whether they intend to or not. Even big filter feeders like our whales, uh, they will, you know, sort of suck up these plastics along with everything else that they're sort of taking in. And they'll tangle around other items and cause life-threatening blockages, uh, which slowly leads to starvation. So fruit and veggie bags, they gotta go. Balloons. Many people don't really want to tackle the subject of balloons, but unfortunately, these are one of the worst killers of ocean animals. Um, people don't often think of them as a plastic, but they are. They're one of the most common items found in the stomachs of dead animals. They're the biggest plastic killer of seabirds. They are found almost always in the, the, the stomachs of seabirds who die from plastic, and it's really, really shocking. Um, and it's something that you know, we, don't, we don't really need. They're hard to digest, they're stretchy, they sort of you know, wrap around and get stuck to other items causing those blockages that we've been talking about. Um, but the other part of balloons that is really a killer is the strings, the strings and the sticks that come with the balloons. The sticks like straws and, and drink stirrers cause harm in the same way, causing injury, um, you know, breaking down into small pieces and getting eaten. But also those strings, now those strings are very likely to wrap around a seabird, to wrap around a turtle or other item, et cetera, entangling them and causing them to drown because they can't swim or they can't fly. Uh, so it's time to, to get rid of balloons. I'm sorry to say, it's time. There are other alternatives available. You know, we can be using paper lanterns, we can be using paper garlands, you know, we can be celebrating with lights in other ways. Balloons, we may love them, but I think it's time for them to go. Plastic bottles. Now, you might be surprised to know that bottles and especially their lids are one of the most common plastics found in our waterways, on our beaches and our coasts and in our, in our oceans. Um, and it's, it's not too hard to see why. 
you know, they contain air when they're, they're, they're um, when you finish drinking them. And that makes them, being lightweight and full of air, that makes it easy for them to float on the surface, et cetera. What you can see here in this image, and this is, this is a real image, um, is a whale shark swimming through a, a uh, plastic patch. Um, and what does it eat? It ends up, these filter feeders end up eating things like our plastic bottles and bags, et cetera. And the other one, the, the caps of the bottles. Now they're particularly likely to be found discarded all over the place on our beaches and our coasts, et cetera. And they float on the surface and they get eaten by birds and other animals. And it's, it's, uh, it's truly shocking. These things build up in their stomachs um, and they cause those life-threatening blockages. All right, on to takeaway containers. Now, we, <laughs> during COVID time in particular, I think many, many people have been turning to takeaway to support our local businesses and that's been great. Um, but unfortunately, what we have been seeing is the use of plastic takeaway containers going through the roof. Uh, and those takeaway containers, like many of these other plastics, are really harmful for our wildlife. Really lightweight, they float on the surface of the ocean, they break down eventually into smaller pieces. Um, many of them are particularly brittle. You think of those, those plastic takeaway containers that you'll often get sort of your Chinese food, your Thai food, et cetera, in. Um, and they, they can sort of break uh, in small pieces, develop holes, and then, like even plastic bags, animals can get something stuck in those holes, their heads stuck in those holes, et cetera, and that can cut them and cause injuries, um, or they eat those small sharp pieces which cause those internal injuries. There's also some evidence that uh, takeaway containers when they're heated can leach some chemicals into our food, which of course is bad for us and we don't want that. Now, the good news is alternatives actually exist to plastic takeaway containers. There's a range of new earth safe products that have been developed to make it possible for us to have our food takeaway to support our local businesses without also causing that harm. Things like the gas, which is made from cornstarch, um, things like those recycled pulp containers, even mushroom material. There's a range of new stuff that's been developed just to solve this problem. Uh, and it's, it's really exciting that we're now at a point where we can start moving away from these killer plastics. Polystyrene. Now, many folks might have thought we were done with polystyrene. It's been hated for a long time. But as you can see here in this picture, things like polystyrene cups persist to this day, polystyrene takeaway containers, etc. This is a really harmful plastic. Composed of 95% air, um, polystyrene and styrofoam, which is another word for the same thing, travels long distances on the air and in the water. Its soft structure means that it fragments easily into small pieces that birds and filter feeders will eat. Uh, and birds will feed it to their chicks, mistaking it for food. It's hard to digest and it, you know, as these blockages build up, it slowly starves the animals that eat it. Now, the other thing uh, which uh, many people have been shocked to discover is that there has been several studies that have shown polystyrene also tends to leach the chemical styrene into the food or into the, the things that the polystyrene contains. Uh, and styrene has been linked to cancer and some other concerning uh, things. And that sort of dangerous chemical might not be one that we actually want ourselves in our bodies. So it's one where we need to think twice about it, not just for ourselves, but also for our ocean wildlife. Now, plastic coffee cups and their lids. Um, and I think I've misspelled this slide a little bit. That's all right. <laughs> so plastic uh, coffee cups. Now, they uh, many people might be surprised to know that most coffee cups are actually lined with a thin film of plastic, which is used to prevent leakage. Uh, unfortunately, what this also means is that plastic coffee cups are notoriously difficult to actually recycle. That plastic lining bonded to that paper makes it a difficult thing for recycling systems to deal with, and not many of them can, which means that almost never do these plastic coffee cups, lined coffee cups, actually get recycled. Um, in particular, their lids as well, they're very likely to end up floating and in the ocean, et cetera. Uh, and as you can see here, they can you know, end up on our beaches uh, and they take a long time to break down. Same problems as before, we're talking about those sharp pieces that animals eat that cause uh, internal injuries and uh, eventually build up into to blockages. Uh, you might be surprised to know that Australians throw out 2.7 million coffee cups every day. We love our coffee in Australia, uh, but it comes with a really big problem. 
and it's time that we moved away from these coffee cups. Now, again, people have been working on developing alternatives to those plastic lined coffee cups that we can switch to, but as well, we can also bring our own reusable cups. A big part of the solution to plastic pollution is moving to a culture of reuse. You know, this disposable society that we've uh, built up around ourselves, while very convenient, can cause great damage. And our oceans can't keep taking the plastic. And it's time for us to start thinking about what happens to the stuff after we use it. Number 10, disposable plastic cups, plates, and bowls. Now, used once and thrown away, our disposable plastic cups and plates are rarely recycled. Uh, I was surprised to find out that actually these plastics often can't actually be sorted at recycling centres due to the unusual size and shape, etc. cetera. Uh, they easily, like our other plastics, blow into waterways, end up in our oceans, breaking down into those sharp pieces that can cause injury to our turtles, our whales, our seabirds, our other wildlife that are out there. And it can take up to 450 years for your average plastic cup to break down. It's stunning how long this plastic lives, far longer than you, your kids, your kids' kids. These plastics are still out there floating around in the oceans in small pieces that are being eaten by our marine wildlife. Now, those are the 10 worst plastics, uh, the 10 worst single-use consumer plastics that we're using day to day. And the good news is, is alternatives exist, earth-safe alternatives exist for each and every one of these plastics. So we have the luxury now of moving away without having to give up so much of that convenience that we've all come to know and expect. But to, to, to really deal with the problem of plastic pollution, it's not just a matter of you and I giving up plastic, you know, when we go to the store or things like that, et cetera, because that plastic's still getting pumped out there, whether we like it or not. I mean, it's been amazing to see that across Australia, across the world, people have been, you know, gagging to take action on plastic pollution, but plastic production's increasing and we've got to deal with that. So we've got to talk about dealing with plastic pollution at every part of the cycle. We've got to break that toxic cycle of plastic, producing, uh, plastic production. So that means, yes, you and I choosing to refuse single-use plastics that we don't need, uh, but we also don't often get a choice. You know, many of us have, you know, talked uh, about the, the sheer frustration of going into a supermarket and your stuff gets put in a plastic bag whether you ask for it or not, or when you're going out and buying clothes, et cetera, and they're still using heavyweight plastic bags, even though plastic bans exist in almost every state and territory. Many of us know the frustration of getting our takeaway food in a plastic container, whether we ask for it or not, getting given that plastic cutlery, whether we ask for it or not. And what that shows us is that it's not just about us. We're an important piece, but we also need to deal with the distribution of plastic. So the businesses out there who all have the power themselves to choose not to use plastic and switch to alternatives, we need their help as well. And we need to deal with plastic upstream. You know, we need to stop that river of plastic pollution flowing into our oceans by turning off that tap. And that means tackling it at the source, at production. And the best way to do that, to stop plastic at the source of production, to stop it from being used by businesses, and to mean, you know, to, to avoid us having to deal with that fact that we don't often get a say in plastic, is to ban and replace the killer plastics. Earth safe, earth friendly alternatives exist, things that tread lightly on the earth, and it's time for us to switch. Now, the good news is, is globally, people are cottoning onto this solution. Uh, Canada, the EU, the UK, these countries, um, these, these uh, nations have come to the, the, uh, the, the table, as it were, uh, and they've started implementing bans on many of the killer plastics, things like plastic straws, plastic cups and stirrers, plastic cutlery, et cetera. And we can do that here in Australia too. And the good news is, we're on the way. Momentum for change is increasing. Uh, since series like uh, the War on Waste, uh, which was broadcast on the ABC, since Australians have been getting up in arms around the country, that momentum has been incredible. Um, and we're starting to see action. So what you see here on the screen is a map of the current status of action in Australia. Um, and as you can see, we've actually made a lot of progress in the last couple of years. So if you look around the country, you can see that we've got a plastic bag ban in almost every state and territory. New South Wales is the last one, and they, are, they have committed to introducing one in the near future. 
And that's really exciting. So that's one plastic that we're getting off the table. The next step, and you, you will have heard a lot about this in the news recently, is container deposit schemes. Now, states like South Australia and the Northern Territory have had container deposit schemes for a decade or more. These container deposit schemes are also known as cash for containers or refund schemes. Basically, what that means is those plastic bottles and containers that people use often don't get recycled. You take them back and you get a refund. And that has been shown to massively increase the amount of plastic bottles and containers that are being recovered. Uh, now, we've seen every state and territory move to make plans to introduce a container deposit scheme. So we've now got one in South Australia. We've now got one in the Northern Territory. We've got one in Queensland, just recently passed in recent years. Got one in the ACT. And then around the rest of the country, we're seeing them being uh, brought in as we speak. So uh, the Tasmania has committed to bringing in their container deposit scheme by 2022. That's just two years away. Victoria has just announced that they're going to be implementing a container deposit scheme to be implemented by 2023. Uh, and WA has in, uh, and we're, we're going to have their container deposit scheme active in June, but unfortunately it's been deferred during this COVID period. Um, but we do expect to see that coming in at the end of this year or very soon after. And then the next step is to ban those other killer plastics. And the good news is South Australia, Queensland, ACT, they are leading the way. All three of these jurisdictions have committed to introducing legislation to ban killer single-use plastics like straws, stirrers, balloon sticks, uh, even sort of um, plastic bowls and plates, and putting in place the regulatory structure would allow them to add other plastics as they com and complete further consultations down the line. So the great news is, is we're seeing awesome momentum and these states are starting to move. And just behind South Australia, Queensland and the ACT, we see other states and territories prepped to move as well. So New South Wales right now, the most populated state in Australia, is actively asking for people's feedback on whether they should do the same. And they've just completed their consultation and where they had loads of submissions from people who were saying, yes, we want to see these killer plastics gone. Similarly, in Victoria and Western Australia, two other highly populated states in Australia, they're working on their next steps on plastic pollution now. And us speaking up right now can determine whether or not they follow in the footsteps of our leading states and territories and also bring in a ban on these killer plastics. So now it's up to us. It's time for us to, to put the pressure on to save Australia's ocean wildlife. Good news is the solutions exist. We know what we need to do to save our wildlife. And from coast to coast, Aussies of all walks of life are angry about the plastic problem, no matter their political leaning. The, the government of Queensland is a Labor government. The government of South Australia is a coalition Liberal government. You know, it doesn't matter what political stripe you come from. Everyone agrees that we need to do something about this problem. And that gives us the most incredible opportunity to tackle plastic pollution. And so we can change everything if we put that pressure on and show them that we have the appetite to make this difference now. So what can you do? There's a link on your screen, amcs.org.au fight plastic, where you will find tools and resources for you to do something about plastic pollution. You should see that website come up for you now, and it'll also be posted in the comments. So we've got a plastic free champion action pack that you can use to start taking action on plastic pollution. There's a petition for every environment minister in Australia asking them to move to ban those killer single-use plastics. And there are plastic-free resources that you can use to both get rid of plastic in your own life, spread the word and give other people the information they need to start cutting plastic, um, as well as to uh, go out there and talk to your local businesses, etc. We've got these great plastic-free cafe calling cards, little cards that you can take with you and leave on the table after you um, have your meal at a cafe. If there's been a piece of plastic that they've been using, which you think they can get rid of, you can do that in a nice non-confrontational way. We've had awesome feedback about that resource. So get in there and grab those resources. There's some great posters as well. And for our businesses who might be on the call as well, we've just gone live with a new pack of resources to help you cut killer plastics out of your business. Uh, some really useful stuff in here. So we've got a um, plastic free business action guide. This gives you all the tools and information you need to swap out those killer plastics for earth safe, animal friendly alternatives. 
you know, whether it's replacing those takeaway containers with the gas or, or mushroom material or recycled cardboard, et cetera. There are alternatives that exist that you might be surprised to know about. And tips on how you can save money as well by switching to these alternatives. And we've been working with some great businesses to put that kit together. And there's also resources to help you get your customers engaged in the campaign to end killer plastics. What we've been seeing across the board is businesses telling us when they move to do something about plastic, people reward them. They love to see their local businesses doing something about the issues that they care about. And I'm just going to stop the share now so that we can have a bit more of a, a conversation. Um, so the other thing as well, uh, as now Australian Marine Conservation Society is a charity. Uh, we're funded by generous ocean lovers across Australia and we're doing the hard work of trying to get these plastics out of our oceans. Um, but to do it, to do all the great work that we do, we rely on generous donations. So if you want to support our work to stop plastic killing Australia's ocean wildlife, you can chip in using the donate button, which we posted in the comments shortly. Now, uh, my colleague tells me that we've had some great questions coming in. So I want to pick a couple and respond to them while we've got time. So let me just take a quick squeeze. All right, okay, now this is a really great question from Alex Ford. Uh, do you think some of the momentum to change to alternatives to plastic has been lost because of COVID-19, especially with straws, plastic containers, cutlery and bags? I've seen businesses and people going backwards in their behavior. How do we get the momentum back? This is a really valid concern. Um, and it's one that we share, share here at AMCS as well. We have seen uh, an increase in the use of takeaway containers, et cetera, that we've been talking about. Uh, and the other thing that we've seen is delays to some of these measures that we're relying on coming in as soon as possible to start saving animal lives, like WA delaying its container deposit scheme, or South Australia, who have introduced their legislation to parliament, but taken a start date off of that legislation. These are concerning signs that we might see a slowdown. Now, of course, we all want to be safe. We all want to make sure that we're not spreading COVID, but it's actually possible to do that without relying on single use takeaway containers and things like that. Um, you know, by uh, appropriately cleaning products, it has been shown that these are just as hygienic by using, you know, the same cleaning measures that we would have been expecting cafes, et cetera, to be using anyway. And of course, as we've been talking about, they can be using other products that don't harm our oceans. Uh, so what we can do, how can we take the momentum back? Uh, what we can be doing is increasing our pressure right now, not decreasing it. So we need to speak up. That means doing things like sending that email to, to your local environment minister using, you can use the tool on our website. Um, there's also a tool on our website, which uh, for, for those who are particularly passionate, I really encourage you to use. We've added a new tool for you to look up and contact your local member of parliament in your state or territory. Now, your local representatives, their job is to represent what people in their local area care about. And if they know that you care about plastic pollution, they know that you want something done about it, no matter the pandemic that's going on right now, because you know that animals are dying, they're more likely to speak up and do something about it. So right now, if we increase that pressure, we could see these measures move forward more quickly and we could see in the states and territories that aren't considering them, them step up and come to the plate. They're watching to see what happens in these other states. They're watching to see what their constituents say and think. So I encourage you to get on the website, use that link, amcs.org.au, fight plastic, um, and see if you can find your local MP. Shoot them an email, ask for a meeting. They'd love to meet with their constituents, and it's not as scary as you might think. They just want to hear what you care about. All right, on to the next question. Um, I've got a great one here from June Egebo. Uh, with the plastic that is currently in the ocean, are there any, uh, microplastic, sorry, that's currently in the ocean, are there any methods on how to tackle this? Is there a way for us to remove the microplastic from the oceans? I haven't got great news on that one. Uh, many people have seen news articles recently about all the microplastic that's building up in the oceans. Now, microplastic is those tiny plastic pieces comes from plastics that break down. Uh, so like our plastic cutlery, et cetera. But it also comes from things like polyester shirts, little tiny polyester fibers that wash off in your washing machine, end up in the ocean. You know, um, the, the plastic that's floating on the ocean surface, those big pieces, et cetera, is 1%, just 1% of the plastic that's estimated to actually be in the oceans. The rest of it is down there, under the water, in the trenches, it's turning up everywhere. Microplastic has been found in coral. Microplastic has been found in Antarctica. 
This morning, I read some news out of um, France that, you know, microplastic particles might be in the spray that comes off of an ocean wave. It's really shocking. Uh, the harsh truth is, is that a certain level of microplastic is now going to be there for a very long time, and we can't recover all of it. Uh, but we can be reducing the microplastic that's flowing in. Uh, there are things that we can do. People can um, grab these uh, filters for their washing machine that you throw in with your clothes and they pick up all those polyester fibers. That's one way that you can help reduce some of the microplastics. Uh, we can work to stop these plastics that are flowing into the oceans. And then there's some really great research that's being done at the moment and on how we can bond and, and recover some of those microplastics in the oceans. Unfortunately, not much of it has come to fruition yet but we do need that investment there. So you can put pressure on there as well to see if we can recover and reduce some of that plastic that's out there. We don't know what the long-term impact of microplastics is going to be on the animals that eat these tiny plastic particles on us as well, who, who are, are thought to be eating these tiny plastic particles. And it's important that we do the research to find out what the impacts is because we need to know. All right, I'm going to do one more question before we wrap up. Cool. Um, I've got a question here from John Stelly. All right. Uh, Shane, you mentioned that there are alternatives to everything listed. Is that true of balloons? I truly believe so. Now, balloons really are an optional extra for celebrations. You know, they're great. They're colourful. They really sort of, you know, give people something fun to hold. And, you know, for kids, that's, that's a, a really exciting thing. But there are other ways that we can do that. You know, you can have flags that you can wave. You can have paper lanterns and, and paper garlands. Um, you know, uh, people can put up posters and that kind of thing. You can use lights. Um, goodie bags is another way. You know, if you're a business, et cetera, who wants to do a promotion or a celebration, you can use a goodie bag. Um, but the truth is, is, you know, we might not be able to replicate the exact size and structure, the floating nature of a balloon. But when they're killing our animals, that's an optional extra that I think we just don't need. Awesome. All right, thank you very much so much. Uh, thank you everyone so much for taking the time to watch our webinar today, to learn a little bit about the plastics that are hurting our wildlife and what we can do about them. I really hope that you jump online um, and, and take action today and, and help us build that pressure that's really gonna change things and, and, and sort of be the tipping point that makes this change happen. We are really close. We've got this amazing golden opportunity with so many people passionate about this issue and political parties of every persuasion wanting to do something. So. Don't miss that opportunity. Jump online and, and do something about it. And if you can spare a few bucks to help us do this critical work, please chip in using the donate link uh, in the comments. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon.